I'm going to make a video about the saga of the low battery smoke detector. And it is a saga. So what happened was in the middle of September, yep, the birds are going to be loud again. I was in the bathroom, it was like 11 o'clock at night, and I was washing my hands and just brushing my teeth, like putting on moisturizer, and over the sound of the water, I hear this little beep. Not the birds, but a beep like a smoke detector that was getting low on batteries and was telling someone to change it. And it's like every 10 to 15 seconds, beep. Just like this tiny beep that I can barely hear. And I'm like, really? So I go out into the hallway, and I'm walking up and down the hallway, and I can't see where it's coming from, really. And there aren't really any smoke detectors. Like, there's these bell things, but I don't think those go off unless they're actually ringing, like there actually is a, a fire going on somewhere. Eventually, like, that night I still wasn't sure where it was. It was echoing up and down the hallways. Like, I could hear it everywhere in that hallway. And it was pretty loud. And eventually I did figure out where it was coming from like a few days after. I traced it to, of course, the room right next to mine, 204. Um, so my neighbor on the right, and that was why I could hear it in my bathroom because my bathroom shares a wall with them. Um, so luckily I was able to sleep that night because I couldn't hear, really hear it in my bedroom and I could put the fan on anyways. And then the next morning, actually I think I called the I made the call the, that night. Um, I called them again like the next morning, a few days later. So the first thing I did, Tekka, <laughs> Tekka was not involved in the story. <laughs> first thing I did was try to call community management. They have an em emergency 24 hour number. It's not 24 hours because I just got an answering machine like the first three or four times I actually called them. And I tried to tell them, hey, like, there's this alarm going off and it's really annoying and I don't know how to like if you can shut it off or call the people to shut it off um, because it wasn't in the hallways it was in someone's unit and these are privately owned so it's not like they have a key and they can just get in there so this thing kept going for the next few days and I'm like calling community management and trying to figure out a way that this can possibly stop and I can hear it in my main room um, I can't watch TV because every time it gets quiet I hear this beep again all the time and so eventually I worked out a system where I would just turn the fan on above my stove like all the freaking time when I'm in my apartment and like I grade here I work on writing assignments here, I do, I'm working on my graduate project here, it's like, I need this space to not be really noisy and annoying, which I know I have pets and they occasionally squawk, but I turn them off at night, like I can, I can cover them, and anyway, so this went on for two weeks, like this smoke detector just going off, and after a few days, I realized I've never seen anyone come out of that apartment or go into that apartment. And I've never seen lights on there at night. The blinds are always closed. And I'm like, no one's there. No one can, who has the key is actually going to know there's a smoke detector going off. Oh, hi, Cooper. You're my, my little assistant. Hey, hey, baby. Me hear this baby. So it was, it was a nightmare. And finally, two weeks later, like two weeks to the day, it was another Monday, I managed to get through to community management. And I was so surprised that I actually got a person. And as soon as, like I said who I was and what the problem was, they laughed at me. Like, it was obvious they knew exactly who I was and that I had been complaining for a, lot, a while and emailing them and calling them. But um, I told them the number of the unit. They asked me to confirm that. And I was like, I'm like really sure it's coming from there because I put my ear up to the door. And well, I didn't tell them I put my ear up to the door because that sounds really creepy. Um, I was like, I, it's loudest from there. It must be from that unit. 
And they're like, well, we don't know what we can do, but we'll try contacting the owners. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like, just do whatever you can. And they said they had sent um, maintenance by there, but like they couldn't get in, so they couldn't do anything. Um, which they didn't tell me they had actually sent maintenance because as far as I knew, they weren't responding to me and my calls had just gone into the ether. And then, so I called them in the morning before I went to San Jose to do my class. And then when I got back, it was quiet. I was like, oh my God, it, it's gone. And I couldn't believe it because like I thought it was gone before. I thought it was getting quieter before. It, it never was. It always just came up again. It was like, I was quiet. Then beep. I'm like, no. And it was so strange when it finally did stop because I was like, oh, I don't have to turn the fan on. Oh, I don't have to like run through the hallway because it's so unpleasant to be in there because it's so noisy. It was... It was like I had forgotten what it was like not to have that. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. And you think the story would be over, but just today, like another week later, my mom emailed me and she said that she had gotten an email from the Monte Moreno Community Management saying that there was a new rule in place that all units had to, like, um, say whether they were privately owned or whether they were renting or whether someone was living there and also to have a contact number for the person living there in an emergency if that number can't be reached. So my mom was like, hmm, I wonder if other people were complaining just like you, Stephanie. And I was like, yes, I have helped to make a new rule so that this doesn't happen again. I feel like I've actually accomplished something with all my complaining, which I thought was going to be useless. I thought that thing was just going to go off for months and months until the batteries finally ran out. But luckily, um, that was not an earthquake. That was my bird um, jumping around, and he shook the camera. And But luckily, it's been solved. So until the next weird sound happens, I am safe. And... It was so annoying. Like you can even hear it out in the courtyard, and there's like a fountain that shoots six feet in the air there. So you think like that would cover up any noise, but you could still hear it out there. And I'm actually I'm not sure whether other people complained or not because like I'd see people walking in the hallways and they would apparently not even notice it. And I saw people like hanging out in the courtyard and they apparently didn't notice it either. And I'm like, how can you even sit out there? It's so annoying. But who knows? Maybe I did this single-handedly, or maybe a bunch of other people were complaining too. I'll probably never know. But anyway, that is the saga of the low battery smoke detector. And thank you for listening. And thank you for being patient with all the weird bird noises going on in the meantime. Bye!